I wish we could have like showed more at Champions. So it felt like there was work left to be done and story left to be told, but we didn't manage to kind of tell that. Slide six, slide one. That's all on us, like we can't change that. Like we could have played better, but it felt like there was more to be given there that wasn't kind of shown. Win or lose, we're having a good time. We qualified for champions. We've done major things here today, boys. Don't stress out. Whatever happens, happens. No regrets, boys. Ready? This is our chance. FFC! This is our trophy. FFC! Let's make some history, boys. FFC! Fanatic. It was fast, it was aggressive, yep. it was decisive, and it gets him around win. Kirk thinks either as Mystic gets three to 2v2 and both members of Fnatic are just so weak. Solo, Nagsit solo. Alive. One, two, Nagsit cleans it up. Crew gets a four. Oh. This 1v3. Wait, that's a spike. A 1v2. It still hasn't been planted. Ooh. Nagsit doesn't know. Mystic has so many targets in front of him. He's able to clean up both. A 3v3 here. Mystic. Or the leader for this team. Do you have a miracle in you? Can you get it? Bro, to don't fake. And then perhaps take oh. the fight. That's exactly what Poster does. But Magnum comes up huge. Magnum's able to get two. Crew down to two. Oh my gosh. No it's way. all down to Domo, the 1v1. He's got the old and they've done it. The bells of the ball take down. It was a, it was not a good loss. If I if I've done everything I can to win and I still lose, then obviously it sucks because it's rough. But it doesn't feel as heavy on my heart. That's the nature of competition. And if people are making mistakes, it's up to the opponent to kind of utilize and take advantage of those mistakes. And that's what they did. Every time we lose, I feel like I didn't work hard enough. Or even if I did, I feel like I worked hard enough. I felt like they still could have been more done, you know? Looking back on it, it's just fucking... Don't worry. I'm visualising. Yeah, I know. It's going to sting for a bit, but that's what makes you grow stronger and be a better player, a better teammate, and overall a better mentality. That's it, really. You okay, Doma? Made it to champions. Yeah, I know. We'll win another time. You know that it takes one year to get at the same point, at the, at the same stage, and to fight for the same thing. It kind of hurts you. I was thinking about like maybe I won't be even in the team like next month, like, I don't know what's gonna happen, right? But that loss really hurt. It's, it's just like always question, like, maybe we could have won. Yeah, after every loss, it just sucks a lot. I felt kind of like super empty. I did everything that I could, but it didn't work out. All the work you have done for the year, it's just like, it's done, erased from you, and you cannot change that. And I expected more out of us, 
and also I expect more like out of champions. I didn't think we would end up on the quarterfinals losing to Crew. I felt disappointed because we put so much time into it. They played just like better Valor than us and there's no not other way about it. Do you know why we didn't win? Because I don't play Brimstone anymore. So he's not my agent, he's on the poster. So I think that's actually why we didn't win. Interesting theory. Yeah. And then there's other stuff. But I think it's the Brimstone. Yeah. I think crew came in and they came in guns blazing and they did outplay us. You can't take away a credit from a team that obviously performed amazingly that event. I think we lost more for them being good than for us being bad. You win or you learn, you know, that's the way I go by it. You have to take these losses and then make sure that you can turn them into good. It's a loss, but it's another learning curve. When the win is in your grasp, you've got to be ready to kind of grab it and take it, you know, ruthless, ruthless businessman. None of the team had been to land before this, like we're, we're just new boys, you know. It was the first time playing outside of my bedroom, that event. Damn, this is kind of hype, like first international event Riot's ever hosting and we've managed to qualify, yippee! Remember when Cloud9 released the tank tops? If Fnatic do that, I'm in. I think the moment they hit the game is where we're going to see their kind of true colours, I guess. Because obviously this is like the first big land for almost all of them. I just had to sort out my monitor. Going alright. Got the hand warmers going. The general perception on Fnatic after we qualified, I think people started to know how strong we really were as a team. Because we were getting the results. It's all hype and everything and the oh, Sentinels are going and all oh, like these big teams are going, bit nervous, bit nerve wracking. We spoke to Liquid and Liquid, because we found out we were playing Crew, and Liquid like, Crew are good, man, they're good. And we were like, oh yeah, are they good though? Like, surely, like we're, we're doing okay, we're losing every scrim. Everyone good? Run around. Boys, it's okay to be nervous, you know? If everyone relax and enjoy the moment. We don't want to look back with regret you know you don't want to look back and think like oh man i was stressing out too much on that in that game i was stressing out these games you know like let's just enjoy the moment have fun laugh about things you know and don't underestimate because people did it versus us and now look where we are respect everyone have fun show off we uh, we win together we lose together let's find the funny side of things first team on and last team off this stage. That's, that's a big question. I, I, I remember watching their VODs back and I was thinking, oh yeah, this is quite easily unashtrapable. They do this, this, this. If I do this, they'll probably do this and we can do this. If we can feel that boast is confident, I think the team's confident because like, when it comes down to like our leader, setting the example, I think, um, I think it really affects the, the rest of the team. Like before, going up on the stage it was like like oh shit oh, like the smokes go off the lights on i got like goosebumps and i was like okay this is cool and when we stepped onto that stage i didn't even feel like nervous or anything you don't have time to be nervous and i was worried that uh, no no lane experience i'm gonna be stressing out or play badly but as soon as you sit down behind the pc you feel just excitement. One near me, one near me, one near me. I'm picking the fight. That's heaven, I think. Heaven, heaven I think. Oh, let's, go. Go. let's go, bitches! Woo! Scary times now. Fnatic back to the wall, both of them there. Now Mazino's gonna be the first one out. Spots one. Might have heard the secondary gunfire. B and J needs to come around. Can't do it. Mazino! Doma denies. And Fnatic just going from strength to strength now. They're walking mid. Invested as well. Doka's just walking mid at map point, and he's got two kills. 
He's on fire right now and he wants to keep going, but Klaus denies it, extinguishing the flames. So it's starting to build through mid. Domino on the push as well. This is dominance from Fnatic at 13 to 5. Map 1 is a wrap. And again, you give them an inch, they take a mile. Those are the sorts of rounds that they just look so damn good. Ooh, cuddle room! <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go, let's go. I probably have a bit of Six shit, six shit. Let's take down nice for now, nice and chill. It's not over yet. One nil. Back against the wall now. Just stay focused, stay in game. Good momentum there. Good luck, Mr. Derma. Thank you, Mr. Jacob. Thank you. They're gonna have to they're gonna have to change some stuff up soon because Derek is just fucking them. Yeah, well. So be, be ready, be ready for them to change shit up. They were just doing the same thing over and over again. I just remember thinking like they're not changing anything. We can just keep doing our thing, and I'll just have the reads, and I'll know what's going on. Recon? No recon. recon. That means they're doing one, one, three. But we ended up just winning all the buy rounds and whatnot in another 13-5 or 13-4. So I was just like, damn, like we're we're, we're pretty good. The fanatic destroy crew in the first game of Masters. If yes, you could consider it an anomaly in this map pool across these two teams. Is is the Weirdest winner's celebration I've seen, no surprise. <laughs> Bosa's at the center of it. Well, Bosa being the entertainer he is, uh, he, he took the opportunity to, to make sure that we celebrated all of our victories. Because I think Bosa had the idea of, um, for the crew game, the idea of like me and Domo being pretending to be bodyguards and like letting them in, like access denied or access uh, granted kind of thing. We're coming off like, yay, we won. <laughs> we got to go to the front, okay. Yeah, I think we felt like the idea of having a celebration also it has like a psychological effect that we we want to win because we want to show off the celebration. Just another day at the office. We went straight into the grind, straight into the wind. We'd love to see it. So I think a lot of like European analysts thought we were just going to straight up win the event and kind of was using it as like banter and stuff and it kind of escalated on Twitter a little bit. I was trying to bring the boys back down to reality at all times. You know, these are tough teams, like, we have no idea. Like, every time someone's playing middle against us, whether they like market or deep mid, Domo and Dirk could. Mostly Domo doesn't understand the protocols that. I, so I think you as well sometimes don't, like, quite appreciate how dancing with death you guys are playing at the moment. The team like Sentinels with like all their experience from Counter-Strike, like they've got serious people who, who know how to play tactical FPS games. Like we can't just like think we're good because a bunch of analysts who've never seen us play against these teams think we're good. You know? Did you always want to be an esports athlete? Mm. I'd say I didn't always want to be an esports athlete. I, like when I was younger, obviously esports wasn't really a thing. So at the time when I was like 11 to about 18, 19, I wanted to be like in musical theatre. Going for auditions and whatnot, getting rejected uh, a lot. Um, and then I just uh, suddenly was like, yeah, I'm done with theatre. So I just kind of ditched it and I just played video games and did streaming and whatnot and I had to justify to my mum that no I can make a career out of this one day. So when Valorant came out I was thinking maybe just maybe I could go pro in this game but I was like screw it I'm gonna try and go pro in this game so I eventually had to form my own team with uh, Coach Mini. My eyes so I have a background in Counter-Strike um, but I was at university at the time and kind of decided that you know I might as well take the stable, normal path of becoming a real human being and not staying up late, being a degenerate. My friends who decided not to get real jobs um, all started kind of making a little bit of money here or there or kind of becoming successful in gaming, whether that was coaching or casting. And I was a little bit jealous. There was a little bit of jealousy there. So I was like, I'm going to make a team. Like, I'm going to search, search the community, see who's that there, who's going to make a team with me. And I saw Boaster was kind of grinding away on Twitch and kind of and I basically like messaged him like, let me coach you, we'll, we'll make a team. Boaster says he came to you to form a team. Yeah, of course, Boaster, Boaster remembers things in very sly ways, but th there's a reason why I'm the coach and he's not. So we basically went through a, like an open trial process. 
We obviously didn't have too much clout at that time. I remember asking Doe Man, that guy was so annoying on the DMs because he's like, why would I want to join? Not why would I want to join you, but he had that sort of attitude. I was like, these people don't even know what they're signing up for. Like, we're going to be one of the best teams in this blooming game. What are they? What, is, what, what sort of thing are they smoking? You know what I mean? Then Boaster messaged me to play with them, to tell. And I was like, nah, I don't really want to. Out of here. We got some trials going. We tried about like 15 to 20 people. We ended up narrowing the list down to Mystic. I found out that he was making a team and I shot him a DM on Twitter uh, to let him know that I'm available. Doma in the end, once he came to his senses, probably got no other offers, so had to settle for us, I suppose. He was, he was, he made me think like, I, I knew who the guys are, I know they're really, pretty decent, and I was like, yeah, let's go, why not? Um, and then we had Mo Forty, who was Mystic's friend, and then... Chuck, t -Suck at the time. I was gonna try and re aggress towards long, and it's not really gone well. Look, the nade comes out, it'll buy him time. Look, he's pushing back in. Realistically, oh. I was using it as a learning experience at the time, but then we got quite good, so it's kind of obvious that well, maybe this isn't just a learning experience. Maybe we actually are going to get picked up by a big team. Maybe we are one of the best teams in the world. So well done. I'm an FC, yeah. I mean, the best unsigned team ever, I'd say. Basically, based off of our kind of tear through of the tier two scene, like we just won like enormous every single tournament we kind of applied to at that point. Sealing the deal, I've got to say it. Summon FC just made Valorant look gorgeous. We had some interest from Orcs and Fnatic being one of them, seeing us as like a team that pre-First Strike, if we come into First Strike and do well, this could be a legit contender in Europe kind of thing. All of a sudden we have all the Orcs gunning for us, like which is kind of like sound crazy. Because a month and a half before that, I was still going to school and then trying to play like two hours a day. PGUL played. Summon FC just styled on this game. And we were like, we really need to do well at this first strike. Towards the other side, he's going to see another. He can't do it. Summon, hold on again. We came second place. Oh, and he still turns it around. It's all on Mystic. That was a pretty decent result, I'd say. Talks were made. Business would happen. So yeah, it was very surreal to me. It was exciting. It was like, holy shit. We've uh, put all this work in and it's kind of paid off, so. We joined Fnatic and I saw it as like, now, now the grind begins kind of thing. So we had a lot of work to do, basically. Yeah, there was a little bit of pressure there and like, I think it kind of showed like as soon as we got signed we had kind of poor results. We started losing straight off the bat and I think it was because we were a good a strategical team but I think individually like with the players that we had we weren't strong enough to compete at top level. We needed to make roster changes and that's what we did. I mean I kind of trusted Colin that like he knew that we needed those changes and our job together was to try and convince the boys that this was necessary at that point. Um, because obviously the boys still had some, a lot of affinity for both Jack and Mel. Yeah, that was, that, was, uh, that was rough because me and Mo were quite close teammates. Are you still really close with Mo? Yeah, I'm still really close with Mo. I see him like every day. Jack, I think it was an obvious one because he, he, I think he knew himself like. But the Mo one was definitely like more, more of a shock and a surprise to me because I knew Mo was like, right, still right, like to this day Mo is a, an amazing player. Magnum and Durka were our first trialists. And um, Durka had two trials to prove that he deserved a spot on the team. And I was worried because two trials is often not enough to prove you're good enough for Fnatic. But I mean, he looked like the best player in the world when he played the trials. Yeah. So it was like uh, a big step for me and also like a good feeling that uh, like I watched them before and now I could play for them. Magnum was really good with situations that we weren't good with previously with his comms and like dynamicness. He was, he had a lot of ideas, which was cool. I was really excited because uh, I just like, that was my goal and I knew I kind of reached it. I'm like, 
oh my god, this is like fanatic. It's like as a kid I was watching those guys playing CSGO at majors and winning them. And all of a sudden something switches and we are just like the best team. Everything felt right. It was like the mood, um, the determination, like everyone, like that passion and fire was back in the team. We play G2, Vitality, who was it? Liquid, we just beat all of them. Then we go into the MEA, we, we beat like Yield and I don't know, Oxygen to go to playoffs, and then Gambit, highest pressure one yet. Like we are potentially gonna represent Fnatic at the first like international LAN if we win this game. Yeah, so like to, to qualify for our first international LAN, we had to play Gambit. The last round needed to win. It was a 4v1, and we were like, we, Dover Screen's like, we're going to Iceland, boys. Iceland, boys. I'm not picking. I'm not picking. He gets one kill, and Moss is like, yo, yo, chill, chill, chill. Naving him? We just need that one kill to qualify. Yeah, I was a bit disappointed that people were starting to celebrate before, before the win. That's just pure emotion, right? Like, it, it is nice to see even as a coach, even though I'm kind of in the back of my head, like, don't want shut up, you know? Like, stop being an idiot. He's long, he's long. And mostly just Come like, on. shout, swing on three, boys. Can we just jump out window and then swing? Yeah, 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 yeah. One, two, three. So we started yelling, and it felt really nice because we made it to Iceland and only two spots were left. It was fun, it was fun. Uh, and that's how it went. Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. You know, we qualified, we felt really good, but obviously from then on it was like, we don't know what these teams are going to be like in Iceland. The competition's tight, that you can't take your, your foot off the gas at any point. From this game, it was a lot of Sage going down here, drones here, and Bosa said in this game they walked here quite a lot. In our game, they might not. And just double walk down. Like, you two just double swing off long and kill zombies. I'm not 100% sure what we should do against that one, to be honest. Four on that. Yeah. Can yeah. I buy it all first then? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely feel like people underestimated what I could bring to a team. Maybe they thought I was too old, or maybe they thought I was a content creator, or I don't know, whatever. Hey, let's go, let's go, let's go. This is what we work for. To beat teams like this, so hopefully all that work Hopefully all that hard work um, will reward. After beating Crew, I think it was like, when's the next game? I was like, give me more, and I want to win more. I want to, I want to play some more international teams. I got that kind of taste for it now. So I was like, oh yeah, Sentinels, they're going down. Look at us, we're looking, looking on fire against Crew. Yeah, going into that Sentinels game, I think we were confident. We were very confident. We were definitely in an underdog position. We were expecting like high quality gameplay from just these individuals. Like they're all individually so good. First team in. Let's go, baby. Sentinels, a team with an incredible amount of firepower here, looking to rock the European region. Fnatic, arguably the best team from that region, up there with Team Liquid. This is the team, if there is one from Europe to defeat the Titans and Sentinels. On the back, he's actually going to take down Boaster, and there goes the spike tap. It's going to be Fnatic having to force the issue. Moving closer now, they've got to closer distance because the stick seemed to be coming, but Tens comes off of it to get the frag, to prevent the trade, <gasps> has to stick it again. Does he have time? Can he make it work? Oh! oh! Fnatic! Yeah! yeah! Dirk, a nice opening pick following it up as well, but it's up to Mystic now. 10 seconds to plant this spike. He might just be able to get this down, but he's got Shazam there. Just Ooh. such a presence on that B site, and that is Sentinel. Mystic has to try to respond in mid here. They've got to get something back, but it's just failing here, Red. With it doesn't seem to be any anything for them. And now Sentinels make their move on the post plant. Mystic has got a lot going for him, but this is a tall task. It suddenly is Mystic making his way forward to see what he can get done here. Oh, well, not too word. much. <laughs> Shazam, excellent. 
excellent final round to close things here. Sentinels look like they were in so much trouble, Riv, but they managed to lock in map one. Nice try, boys. Nice try. Come on, come on. Gather around, gather around, gather around, gather around, gather around. Let's reset now. Reset. Reset everyone. This is a new game. We forget about that game. We lose that one. You have to reset. Everyone reset. You okay? You resetting? You, yeah, you're looking yeah. like you're going to cry, my boy. Come on, give I'm me a hug. Like, give me a hug, you big I'm baby. I'm probably going to cry. What do you mean? No, I know. I am, though. Come on. Come on. Let's focus on the next game. What's the next map? Haven. Haven. This is our map anyway, so let's focus on that. We know what we're doing. If do you we wanna know? Can we double check what side we're We're starting attack. attack no? Can I go piss? Yeah, yeah you can go yeah, piss. Same. Everyone go piss. Everyone go reset. Come on. That's that's first time where we felt nerves because we were losing really badly and it was a tough match. Uh, they were really good at the time and yeah, I think it was really first time where we were pro like really tested. Six up on the platform. Fantastic work from Sentinels. They are dropping Fnatic members with ease at this point. Only two remaining at this moment. The Seekers will go out. Boaster on the flank yeah. for tens with the daggers is lethal. Mystic has to try to bait him out, but Zoms is not falling for it. He is not going to call this at all. He's going to force the stick. Such a great play from Zoms. Now just jiggling, oh, but maybe has he done enough? Beautiful. He hasn't done enough. Mystic, beautiful ah. indeed. Finally, we want a pistol. It was one of them off games. When you, when you do something you would never usually do, and then you're like, after you die, what, why am I doing this? Tens has a lot of work on his hands here. He's not going to be able to deal any damage. It's up to Dapper there. Oh, oh no! What is that? What, is it? what the hell was that from Dapper? Oh, he does it. They come in. So Boast just says, go off my place. Go off these orbs. We have to be able to hit them and figure out where some are. So now Boaster gets that sentry information to where the players of Sentinels could be. And there it is. Dapper's going to lock it in. Sentinels have bested wow. Fnatic in the upper bracket. 2-0, but it wasn't anything except a very, very close series. This had, this could have gone absolutely either way, Riv. This was so damn close. But that's what happened. We just, it's a good one to watch back because we were making too many like little basic, land basics, we'll call it. But that's what happens when you're on stage, so it's okay. Remember, we lose into Sentinels, which was unfortunate. But it was it was it was close scores, so we were, we were still feeling ourselves, you know. We felt like, right, that was the best team at this event, and we've almost just beat them. None of the rest of these teams should, um, I don't know, scare us, you know. I think the lower bracket was like a good wake-up call for us. Something changed and we felt like, okay, this is where the tournament starts. All right, boys, everyone hands in then. First team in, last team out, you ready? First team in, last team out! I think our first opponents were X10. We had X10 first, and that game was actually kind of close. Three, two, one, I'm swinging. No! Nice! Nice! No! Nice! 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 Sushi Boy's huge denial. Great work there, but the arm no comes way. back in. Mystic out of no nowhere. Way. And it's just Paddy Pat. No way did they just do that. Is this the voice? Are we getting the voice really? Is this trademarked? What? Are we allowed to show this? And then we had version one, and for some reason they changed their comps. They kind of changed it to a weaker comp, so we kind of just beat them as well. Homer a little lower duck, but they still stand, and no one's given them anything. Fnatic is sitting on this one, a couple of... Look at that swing on it! That is so good! No, it's not me. That's not me. No! Oh! Yes! That's a loss! Bye-bye! Fnatic, gonna do magic to run the cop down. Oh, here. Magnum! 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 They've only done it for Natic! Sending version one home, living through the lower bracket! I remember sending back uh, the first American team, V1, and uh, that felt nice because there was like this, this Europe versus NA like uh, story to be told. Um. Let's just do a nice one. Two, 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 motherfucker! 
Talk me through that double game where it's liquid and new turn and you have 30 minutes between the two games. What was going through our minds was like, we might have two games, but in order to have the second game, we need to win the first. So everyone was focused on that. I don't enjoy playing against them because like, I think us and them, we have like really specific play style. Remember boys, if we control our emotions, let's keep them in. Keep him in check and we'll be freezing through this game. Liquid, like, I've anti strat them. I know what they do. Let's just beat them on this. The rivalry has developed quite a bit because we played them so often. Now Magnum on one side, Boaster on the other. There is no way in, there is no further step forward. <laughs> Liquid, boom, done. Kind of just running with this kind of momentum, this confidence. After the first game, we were like, oh shit, we have 30 minutes. We just ate instantly fast. I think it's, I need to double check, but Omen showers, smoking quite deep, so I think it's kind of new showers. Yeah. Jet Speedway, Ray's taking the cut. Felt super so rushed, and personally, I didn't even like remember most of the stuff because I was focused on like eating. I'm not 100% sure. So. I have never seen. And then just going on the stage, it felt so funny because we already did it. So it's like, Nitin should be like easier for us, but I think they surprised us a lot. Big fight! Perry runs in there as well! He's got it halfway! Missing, missing the spam! Picks up the oh point! No. He's out of bullets! And he's actually managed to win the pistol! Need to try and clear that corner, although Allow pushes out, manages a headshot, Perry alongside him as well. Pistols have been the bane of Fnatic's life, and it seems like New Turn are gonna pile on. It was, it was actually very, very tough. Fnatic's side still has two players here, holding onto it, locking it down, and taking the map win, 13 to eight. New Turn, they've warmed up after map one. We will be going to map three of Haven, and all the way, to determine who's making it into the finals. Everyone come outside to the fresh air area. Bostra, he had some insane speech. He's like, boys, we've done like, we've played five maps today. Come on, let's end it on the last map. I think we've forgotten where we are, boys. We're in the lower bracket finals of Riot's ever international event. Why are we forgetting that? You know, let's keep the mood positive now. Come on. Yeah, we, we made some cock ups. Yeah, we fucked up. Shit happens. Ascent isn't even our strong map. It just became strong two days when I made some cheesy setups. Like, if any of you would like, not sad now, switch it off. We're professionals. We're professionals. Everyone needs to switch it off. Everyone needs to start focusing now, okay? Okay? Already taking more passive angles, making sure that they can get the health of Mystic up. He's already watching that angle, holding on oh, a oh, oh, will close the round. So now the flank is actually possible. Poster. Ooh, he's in a bit of danger if he pushes out, but the timing was perfect. The trade is there. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, oh my god. Dude, that spike being defused. He has to go. It's now or never. And the time, it's all gone. Poster. Oh, no! They were sent to the lower bracket by Sentinels just a few days ago. And now, after a long battle through this lower bracket, besting V1, Liquid, and now New Turn. It was pretty tough. They played so good. Like, they played so original, uh, I would say. Like, the, the, the playstyle was, like, so specific. And mainly, like, the comb which they br brought out, like, it's from the beta, made us, like, Sweat a lot. They played really good. So much hard work, man. But it paid off. But it's not quite done yet. Back to the VODs later. God. How are we going to do that? I'm dreading to think of it. Five maps we've got to play. I'm hoping for a 3 0 because I'm tired. Yeah, I believe we can actually win. I'm going to get my redemption, you know, I'm going to get my revenge. I thought Santa Claus looked like a slightly better team coming into the event. 
flips and I thought it was like a coin flip kind of game. Flip steaming, Rossimo! It felt, feels nice, like always when you are underdog and you prove other people wrong. Oh, on the bait there, they are actually going to try Whoop. to finish Shazam, but Whoop. they go into the firing squad what? of the Sentinels here. That's, uh, that's, that's pretty awesome. Fnatic just massively baited there for the Prime Gaming Flawless for Sentinels. It's a delicate dots, and he's going to absolutely nail Shazam. One more player to go, and he can just try to pressure here. And then comes his teammate Doma in for the assist. And then that leaves it on Dapper. Dapper is not looking good from this spot. There's the tab, and Doma finishes him off. Fantastic. Tens is there now, able to help Dapper as that wall goes down. And this is beautiful. Just enough time bought there by that cage. And now Shazam swings in. Sentinels are looking fantastic. When it came to the actual game, we just made too many mistakes. So let's see what Fnatic has. This is their map, this is their pick. We're in the map two for Grand Final. He's a Zomps, has to get these forward kills to hold the stick. Oh, oh my god! He's gonna drop Dapper. And it doesn't look like there's time here for Zomps to win this one. Can't find the spray, it's poster all day. Dangerous, very dangerous indeed. Able to finish off Doma, and he's not gonna stop with that one. He's looking to bring it all home here <laughs> in this round at least. And there we go, Sentinels close it down with another Prime Gaming Flawless for them. And Shazam in a forward position. Indeed, Mystic not expecting. Ooh! Just Fury coming out and Dapper will take down Dirk. Wow. Sentinel wow. pick up, bind. Uh, I knew I was there, man. Everything felt off for me. Too much felt off and I was like, okay, if like I can I cannot do anything about those two maps and I have to focus on the third map. So I was just like maybe a bit of nerves, maybe a bit of land pressure, maybe a bit of like just having a bad day as well and uh, not hitting shots, everything like combined. Okay. Right, stay ready. In a sec uh, one second. Yeah, no worries, man. Coming in, bud. Cool. Cheers, mate. Let's go. Cool. Is there anything you need? No. Chance is starting to fall here for Fnatic. Dapper finds the second. Mystic has it all to do. Alone in this situation. Is there any kill here for Shazam? He's going for the hold here halfway. Ooh. Shazam! He's going to pull the swing. Integrity of this push is starting to wane as Fnatic Beautiful still job. trying to hold on with all they have. Missed Woo! it with two great headshots. Poster with the finishing move. And they just don't no expect tens. Oh no, they were not checking for tens. They do trade him out though, but Dapper has crept onto the site. The trades now as Shazam creeps and it's two versus two after all of the trades. Do they know about Zombs? Mystic does. And now Sick is going to be here. Oh. is Mystic pulling out the Seekers. He's got the cross there, plays them, but Magnum nice. swings! The last round, I remember, we had a set thing that we didn't practice for like such a long time. Yeah, so the last map of the whole event, the last round of the whole event, we're in a very good position. Durka gets like a kill to two entries, and we're in like a 4v3, 5v3, like Durka overfaces. I was uh, off the site, you know, I'm overlooking everyone. And then I'm like, oh, they're coming out CT, like they're executing their plan. So I threw the flash and then we were in an advantage position because we had the bomb down and we were playing after plan. And it's going to be tens here now that we're following, trying to find something on the flank. He knows there's someone up here. We've got Boaster meditating in, in the window. Mystic is throwing the flash uh, and yelling about it. They're running through. Sonar up. I didn't realize Doma was in the position he was. Put the flash. Team flashed my teammate. Doma's close. They don't know. Oh my god, he gets flashed! The team flashed! You can't cry about it or anything. It happens to everyone. The team flashed! Magnum's in the smoke here, tense. Oh my down. god! Oh, Magnum's got no HP, not like this! And then they retake the side and get others, and we kind of like fell on Sentinels! That. They're gonna get the defuse! They've done it! Sentinels are the masters to Reykjavik!
I was obviously like, really disappointed and sad about the loss. But yeah, I also got given like bad news that I didn't get told to after the tour of it. Because it just like, because it would have been better for me to hear it after the tour of it. So I stepped away for a little bit. Um, I did feel like I needed my own space. The social media presence, it, it kind of got to me a little bit at first, but then like I've, I've grown with it and like now if I hear, oh, Mystic Flash, I'm like, yeah, my, my name's getting mentioned. <laughs> uh, it's funny, it's funny. And I, I take, I, I, you just got to live with it, you know? Uh, nothing's going to change. It's the past now. You can't change anything about it, so. Oh, we should have won. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, we should have won. Thinking back to it now. Bunch of nudes. <laughs> I think now, yeah. if we were to play now as a team we are, we would have probably won that event with a 3-0, honestly, because, yeah. Bringing together the best teams from around the world to compete here in Reykjavik, Iceland. An amazing host to what is the first international land in Valorant history, and it will go down. The first final where Fanatic was bottling every game. Watches. Amazing aces. We've seen nail biting overtimes, a, a couple of them in this final series here, and the rise of really a new stuff. We'll win worlds. I was saving it for worlds. Oh, what a way to lose. Man, I was looking forward to carrying that trophy. I was more so disappointed with how Sentinels reacted to winning. Like, I remember Dapper saying something about it being easy, and I just remember thinking, like, that game was not easy to you. But obviously, the, the whole kind of brand right now, the whole organization's brand is very, like, ego up themselves, kind of like, we're, here, we're gonna win, you guys are rubbish. I guess they were trying to keep that coolness about them. When re in reality, all they do is play video games, so like, <laughs> let's be real boys. <laughs> uh, I might be happy now, but behind closed doors, I'm gonna be crying tonight. People say like it was like a really good final, you know, so there's that, but it would have been a better final had we'd won. And I think, you know, I mean we showed good resilience, but like Minnie said in the um, press conference, I had the reads a lot, and we just weren't able to um, what's the word? follow through with it and like transform it into round wins and like a game win. So yeah, I mean, I'm obviously upset. But also, like, just got to be grateful to be here, man, you know? Worked hard to get here. Worked, worked our socks off. You know, man was watching all the vods and whatnot. So it just sucks to lose in that fashion. But there's always next time. I mean, EU is so competitive, so it's going to be a struggle. We gotta, I, I'm, we're going to have a break, obviously, but then, like, when we come back, we're... The thing, the scene probably adapted so much and changed so much, so like, got to fix a lot of stuff. And the way that Sentinels play mean that they don't have to kind of work as hard as we do in order for them to get the same results kind of thing. So it's just stressful for myself and Minnie probably. I think more so for me because of my nature of the kind of person I want to be and who I am right now and stuff. I want to be a winner, a respected leader and yeah, but it's just tough. <sighs> the thing that motivates me as a pro player is I felt I felt like if when Valorant came out and it was my my shot, I was like uh, ha Alexander Hamilton, where he's like, I'm not throwing away my shot. But the 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 nature of it is that like hard work can get you somewhere with a bit of luck and a bit of skill. And that's kind of what I've been doing in Valorant is working hard, or hardly working. <laughs> the 
hype you get when you win, the feeling you get when you win. That's what motivates me. Not, it's not about the money, the, the fame. I don't know how to explain the feeling when you play tournament, but that feeling to play and more and more, just the excitement. Seeing how much our team can always improve, like helping the boys kind of becoming one of the best in the world, essentially. This is what I'm here for, like, I'm, I'm ready. I mean, we came back from Iceland and we were exhausted, like, frankly, like, we had very little break. And if I were appropriate to have a pretty chunky amount of time to just relax for a little bit. You know, Jake had become superstar, Valorant player who was trying to balance lots of different things and we were trying to work on how to kind of tackle that. All I'd say, the best way to improve is make sure you're doing deathmatch. It was after Iceland where I was just focusing on, like, obviously wanting to be the best team, but there were also other things in the way now, things that I didn't care about before as much, like the content side of things, the kind of expectations, and like, I think it was a slightly overwhelming to know that people actually, one, thought we were gonna win things, and two, expected stuff from us. It was like all those kind of pressures um, got to me and I lost kind of sight of the leader I wanted to be. Bosa had a massive social media growth since Iceland and that was part of his focus. All of us like wanted to, we got a little bit of that limelight. How's, how's life been post Iceland? I think that there was a lot of pressure on us and I think that the game is very competitive. Like being top two in the world last week doesn't mean you're top two in the world next week kind of thing, you know? Uh, best of luck on your qualification run as well. Uh, obviously, talk to Sentinels about this as well, but you came second at um, Reykjavik, but that doesn't help you when it comes to Berlin. You still got to go through the grind as with everybody else. We didn't do too well. Like we, the first set of qualifiers for it, we failed to qualify for it, even though we were given two opportunities. We come from the break, obviously you, you play worse when you come back from a break. So we played worse, teams got better. It kind of feels like people have that ego of being second. And even I had that and felt like it decreased our performance and we started losing some games. We, we lose the first qualifiers. Look at taking down two. Golden Ranger on to Mystic and they lose in LG2 2 0 to Fnatic. And the second qualifier was like in Poland, but I wasn't there because I'm an idiot and didn't renew my passport. So I think that like Boaster as a leader was kind of struggling at that point and kind of was kind of in his head quite a lot about lots of different things. I was so uh, fixated on winning and my own performance. It was quite an unhealthy uh, mind mindset, I think, and a, quite a selfish one, because if you think about it, I'm the 26-year-old of the team, and I'm with a bunch of 18-year-old, 19-year-olds, and if I think back to when I was that age, I was like a lot younger for my age, just solely due to the fact that no, not much life experience, just played video games. So like I didn't really have time to grow mentally and as a person, it was only until later on that I started to do so when real life kind of catches up with you. So if I think back to them, like, and their leader's having a little meltdown because he can't do what he thinks his job is. Meanwhile, they're probably having their own kind of anxiety or stress or uh, performance battles, and they're probably a lot less equipped than I should be to deal with it. So I think if I just helped them, then maybe we would have scraped the win against uh, Liquid at that time. They didn't realize. <gasps> they didn't realize. It doesn't seem like they noticed that Scream dropped down, but this is suddenly Soulcast saying this case is closed. Fnatic are starting to struggle. At the point when we lose to Liquid, the last best of five to qualify for EMEA, it kind of like hit us that, okay, we, we are not making it to Berlin anymore and we have no chances for that. Over alongside him, but this man being behind could be a problem. Mystic again is already going to pick off another, turning it you know. into a two versus two, has a Viper's pit of his own. It's going to bring it back, but he has to do it all, and this time he can't. It is Team Liquid to head through into the EMEA playoffs. They finally get their revenge onto Fnatic. To being able to qualify to the first international event and not being able to qualify to the second international event, coming after coming second in the world, is a massive wake-up call for us. I, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but Fnatic are out. 
there will be no boaster dances heading into Berlin. I just wasn't a good leader. And then when we lost, it was like all of a sudden, like it just built up in me and all, all the kind of feelings I had blurted out, bursted out. And I just remember, I think I just remember smacking the table and running outside. It was just, I think it was just too many emotions. It was just, yeah, too much. It was a weird one. Normally I don't like relying on people to get the job done, you know. Um, I'm a believer of like, if you want the job done right, you do it yourself. Um, there are some cases where that isn't true. For instance, Gambit. We were in a very sticky situation. We were at the top of the leaderboard uh, because of our Iceland performance. But then came Masters 3, the second international event where we didn't qualify for. We lost our spot, so then we did have to rely and kind of have faith in one of the teams that were there, like the Gambit or Ascend, I think it was. Yeah, it was, it was a very slim possibility that this is how it would come down to. Gambit needed to win for us to be able to go to champions. We were watching it and I, I, I wasn't believing at the start of the tournament that Gambit would win and that would be the way we qualify. And they absolutely banged them. Gambit 3 0 Dundee. Thank God, thank God, Gambit. What? By, by going to Champions because they won, it was a nice feeling. <laughs> it felt amazing because when they made it, I was like, oh, finally. We got a get out of jail card and we needed to make sure that we were back on the ball, ready to prove ourselves in Champions and make sure that we were ready, whilst these other teams are competing to get a spot that we were fortunate to get. We went for the boot camp in London and met everybody there. So it was like kind of first uh, boot camp where everybody is together, preparing for the LCK and champions. I felt like I need to prove myself because after Arsenal finals where I didn't do much great. And then I had a strong slump after that. To be fair, I don't care how we got to champions. I'm just happy we got to champions. When we get there, it doesn't matter what group we're in, we believe that we can beat any team anyway. So let's try and beat any team. We were like making sure like everything to work. We started like working on our roles, agents, maps, setups, whatever. We brought like Anders as a analyst and started like working even harder and we kind of felt like, okay, we're doing a good job. Kojo, Minnie and Marcus kind of sat me down in the office and we had like an hour chat or an hour and a half and they were kind of like questioning me about things. and Do I want to be a leader? Uh, what do I see as a leader? What it is, it is I want to achieve? And that kind of talk helped me kind of snap out of the, the rut I was in or the hole that I dug. That's why for Champions, I just didn't care how we kind of got there. All I cared about was rede redemption, not f like beating other teams, but just redemption of showing that I can actually be the leader I wanted to be when I first uh, set out to play this game. And that was kind of, that was kind of what happened. How did you feel like the caster analyst public perception was of Fnatic going into champions? Did people written you off in that group of? Uh, 
Yeah, so going into Champions, obviously everyone was saying we're in the group of death and like, oh, Fnatic ain't gonna get out of this group. Look at them, they've got Gambit got into Champions and all that jazz. And all I remember thinking was, can't wait to prove people wrong again. Have you all done a press conference before? Yeah. No. Okay. You guys. Let's see you. It's cool to banter back and forth. Like, totally feel free to talk to each other, especially if a question's kind of spicy and you're like, oh, I'm going to talk shit to this guy. That's awesome. Do it. Uh, this is for content. This is supposed to be fun. The point of media is to, like, build your brand, build your team's brand, like, build a rivalry. So totally have fun with it. Any other questions? <laughs> You secured second place at Masters Reykjavik, but fell short of making challengers in stage three. So how do you feel about your current form? First of all, I'd like to thank Gambit for getting us the champions. <laughs> um, we've had a difficult process since Iceland of really kind of ironing out the, um, the things that we were masking in Iceland. You know, we were a fresh team then and like everyone was just hitting shots and it was like, we had the strats, but like there wasn't much depth to it. So I think, since then to now, we've just been kind of adding that, adding that, adding that, and um, hope, like, hopefully it works out and we're going to be hitting our shots. We're going to be coming for you. Come to your bomb site. Uh, I can actually tell you how the game's going to go. This is your bomb. That's me uh, during the game and after. <laughs> no. <laughs> Honestly, vanity is on cloud nine. So one, I can't lose my boyfriend. There's just some people that are your kryptonite and some people you're their kryptonite. And I got a feeling I might be vanity's kryptonite when it comes to the team and like the strategy in terms of games. I think there's some teams that we're good at playing against and some teams we're not good at playing against. And I, I got a feeling cloud nine is just one of them that we are good at playing against. Doma put the wall up. Doma did it again. Oh. Doma did it again and Leaf tried going in from the top. Not able to do so. Mystic again. Oh, on the defuse. He doesn't even need to stick it as they're cleaned up. Durka with three on the round. Fnatic get to six. But once again, we were the underdogs. Like, I remember people, like, not even rating Durka as one of the top 20 players. Like, the Hunter's Fury leaf. Oh, leaf. You bit off a bit more than you could chew. But the rest comes out. Does Durka go aggressive? Oh, 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 he tried going hot and heavy right into his lap, and Durka says, Not today. People who say Durka is not a good jet, it's like saying, Ronaldo is not a good footballer just because he had a month where he didn't play very well. So yeah, I don't know, just people, people love to talk dumb stuff, I guess. People were like, oh, Dirk might be like the worst duelist, and I was like, I wanted to prove myself that I can be like the top duelist at the top. A lot of damage, but Cloud9, they've got the sight. Oh, what? Oh, oh, through the smoke! Nice! I say that like we're just better players than them, but they're no slouches and Durka just made them look like noobs. I got a nice hit. Oh, don't do it to him, Boaster. Come on now, oh, that's your no. boo thing. Oh, that's your no. boo thing. Oh, oh my no. god, he's done it. Let's go! Cloud9 <laughs> was hyped as like a favorite to win the whole thing probably, and Vision Strikers. In that Cloud9 game, we were not sticking to our game plan and we were panicking as soon as something went wrong or we were trying to change things up because we felt like it was needed. We're, we're reaching that point, Doug. We talked about four more rounds and the fact that yeah, yeah, Cloud9, yeah. are they going to be able to do it? Well, we're now down to three. Not need to invest it, land the shots, guy. Zeta cleans it up. Cloud9 get another, they get to 10, double digits here. They got these rounds back and they took us into overtime. Panic side of form. I mean, we had almost essentially written them off, yeah. right? But they come back from what seemed like an impossible situation, six feet under. I'm like, what is going on? Like, how does this work? How can a team just, how can people just switch so quickly? Like, And at this point, we're like, uh, come on boys, get our, let's, let's, let's get our heads back in the game. Like, oh, Durka. Durka goes all the way in. He's able to take care of Mitch. Doma does as well. Come on, daddy. Leaf down to one. It's just Leaf. Leaf swings out. He's not able to do it. Fnatic's going to get the defuse. The first round of this EU versus NA matchup goes in favor of the Europeans on their home ground as they send Cloud9 to the lower bracket. I would be cheering with Fnatic Buzz on that stage as well. Apparently, Dirk is not a top 20 player in the, in the event, so I don't know. 
not the best chat and the, the, the worst chat in our group. After beating Cloud9, my confidence went up and people were like, okay, we have to seek vision strikers because they can beat Fnatic down into lower bracket and then they might lose again to Cloud9. And we were like, uh, no. Berserker is looking good with a blade, but it's Durka putting on a show! Oh my, nice. my god. And now Durka, the brawn of the side, the muscle, trying to find one. Vision Strike is clawing onto this round as best they can, but he's found a copy, a little bit of safety mocko. You wouldn't even expect it! Durka's found him, and now the 1v1. Durka's got him! Dead to rights, clutches it out! How are you predicting this? How are you so aware? Tries to deal with the Seekers early, the Divide goes up and now suddenly Fnatic are in trouble. Locked out from the site pretty much, they have to deal with this. Stacks when he gets that as far as he can. They try to play through all the Flash, the Flash goes back in, Doma gets aggressive. Oh, he still gets King! But the trade out is perfect from Vision Strikers. And now Poster and Magnum, what have you got for us? They're desperate, they're still pushing! Oh my god, Poster! Ah, there you go! To be paranoid of the players coming his way. The flash is perfect. Beautiful. The swing is great. Another flash. You couldn't ask for anything better. Buzz goes down. And Doma. What is that? The butcher's in the house just slicing them up. I like being underestimated. It, it, it makes us play better, I think. Because it gives you that, that little spark that you want to prove them wrong as well. Waiting for a second, but it's just been torn apart. Doma is there and it's down to two. King and Marco. It's done. It's all but done. Fnatic in the limelight with the showman at the helm. It's just, it's just like, it's just nice to know that I'm right. You know? Just to know it's nice to know you're right. I don't think like anyone thought like we were gonna win. And it's just like frustrating because I'm starting to like like it's the whole scene just think that we're just like shit. Like we just I'm a bad coach and like most of the bad coach, you know, and we're just like bad and then we're just like But like we didn't think that at all. We're just like I, I don't know what they've been taking to think. <laughs> like Dirk is just shit. Like, like we got some stuff to iron out, but like just the amount of disrespect to someone. Okay. 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 One more heaven, uh, two heaven, Astro and Jet. Perfect, I'm bombarding me to play the. I'm going to play the. I'm going to play the. I'm flashing for you to cross. Can you wall up and go back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Fast, 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 fast. You said Durka just got absolutely clowned upon by our own wall. We had the. Performance coach, we had the analyst, we had mini, we had like a proper like schedule that was filled out from like 9 a.m. We were either gonna look tragic or literally look like the best team again and uh, and uh, just win the whole thing. Why are you panicking? Of yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm it be, it's being good. Of, it's being good. We were doing our early knife because this position has shifted, so we did. But we never do the early knife. That's what I'm saying. The, the, the knife, the knife is useless. Early knife and B main. What do we want it's from It's not them? useless at all. Yes, it is when they're just taking mid control. What do we own? Oh, nice. B main's cleared. Like we can't exactly they're not going full B, and we solved this. This is the same the recon pressure. issue that you had before. It's like you said it really early recon. Well, I mean, crew have gotten a lot better since then. 
they're not the same crew, they actually did a roster swap too. And obviously Kesnet seems to be doing well. But it's still quite the upset. Like, they are underdogs and Sentinels look like they were given their number. I guess they the had zero objectives like crew. That. It would have been nice to play Sentinels, but we'll have to take crew because overall it's going to be nice winning champions if we can get that. Yeah, good. I think we're just gagging to play now. I mean, scrims can go like scrims, but I think we just need to play. Um. You got your retainer in? I do indeed. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm at Champions. I did what I wanted to do. Like I didn't expect to be even like winning the trophy because I see other teams as being like very strong. I do think we're like one of the best teams, but like it's hard to gauge that when you're losing every scrim all the time. So um, yeah, you only realise it when we're on stage against Vision Strikers and Cloud9 that we're actually oh well we're actually not too bad. We're we're really good. It would be nice to win champions. I want to win a fucking event, Phil man. Second place, first strike. Second place, Iceland. What am I? First the worst, second the best? No. Like, we do have top players we're up there in terms of like we have come up with some meta breaking stuff and we are creative and we are skillful and uh, I think that's kind of how I went into champions was like can't wait to prove everyone wrong again and I'd say we did uh, in the group stages at least <laughs> for playoffs not so much <laughs> it was mainly crew story after that Yeah, I think losing is not fun, but it's also a way of kind of like getting better, I guess. Like it, it shows it shows like where the flaws are and not everything's perfect. And that's the nature of the game is literally you have to you're constantly improving or seeking how to improve. There's no like, yeah, we're chilling now, we're consistent, we're at the top. There's none of that. You it's the game is just constantly like this. I don't think you ever plateau in it because there's always something you could do better. It's, it's non-stop. It, I tell you, life just flies when you're playing video games, I feel like. We should have done better than what we did. We were just super bad at closing out games for whatever reason. And hopefully it doesn't cost Fnatic uh, now. I feel it is a huge issue, like not being able to close out games. How did you feel about the decisions that had to be made about that one? Fine. Yeah, the decisions about Doma, I think there were some decisions long time coming, you know. I think Doma is a, a great player, but there are just some things that can't be taught in a short amount of time. And if we want to be the best team, then we, it's similar with the Dirk and Magnum upgrades, think about the kind of impact that had. He, he, was really, he was one of my really good friends, and he's been my teammate for a very, very long time. But I also felt like for our team dynamic, it was probably the right choice. It maybe wasn't. It probably wasn't the fit for the team and the the direction we were trying to head into. Uh, Doma just unfortunately didn't fit into it. I mean, I definitely felt something coming because I knew they wouldn't be satisfied with, with the result. Some other stuff costed me, and it happened. It is what it is. That other stuff was. I don't know. Maybe just me being a bit of an idiot when it comes to like stuff that's not Valorant related, and me. I don't know not being as professional maybe, just costed me. Were you disappointed to have to leave that? Was I disappointed? Hmm. Not necessarily disappointed, but more like sad, because you had to, because it was a nice team, it was nice memories that you have to leave behind, but then again, it's sports and people come and go. Posted Magnum Mystic Dirk and me, we, we did like, 
quite big stuff for, for Fnatic, so I'm, I'm proud of that. And someone from Fnatic will be like in three years. Oh yeah, I've had I've had that Doma guy under me. He was he was good in Valorant. Squat, quick. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, <laughs> When you look back on your first year one with Fnatic Valorant, what do you think about? Uh, I think when I look back on the first year, like I just quite proud of like what we've been able to achieve. I think especially at the start of the, the process where like we were struggling and there was like teething period, like I kind of just proud of all the work we kind of put in and the results that kind of came out of that. Like we've had our ups and downs, but we've been consistently there. And I think so far we've probably been one of the most consistent teams in the whole world at like getting into these kind of deep stages and tournaments. I think we made giant leaps in terms of structure, how we think about the game, strategy, the roster, all the, all the kind of mental struggles that we had along the way. And I think we kind of learned from them. And obviously there's going to be more problems and more struggles this year, but it won't be the same as last year. We'll just keep evolving, keep improving. And, and I'd say I achieved everything I wanted to achieve. I just wanted to go one event and I managed to go to Champions and the Masters event. I'm still unhappy. Uh, I, I won't say we've proved ourselves until we've won the title because um, that's my that's ultimately the goal. just want to win the LAN. I'm really hungry for that because I have lost too much. It would be nice for the boys to win something. Like I'd love to win a championship and if we do win like champions this year I will be crying on the stage but I think like long term like I don't really think as much about those results. I just make sure that day in, day out, we kind of are playing the best we can. If you look back at your first year as a player, what do you think you've learned? Mm. Whatever happens, just, just don't be a dick. I think next time we play, if we're in a finals, I'm going to take it. I think we're good enough to take it now. If not, then another roster change. Uh, maybe I'm the problem, um, but we'll, we'll see. Don't stress out. Whatever happens, happens. No regrets, boys. Ready? This is our chance. FNC! This is our trophy. FNC! Let's make some history, boys. FNC! Okay. Yeah, got some content. You like that hug? I think I've said everything. Are you happier now? Am I happier now? Yeah, because yeah, we're about to go get food, so. And that's a wrap. Good, Good job, man.